Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, we are going to continue our discussion on EMC consideration. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of EMC. This will be the part four series of EMC. So the part one, part two, and part three series of EMC, I have put the video link under the description. Please go through them before you actually come to this video. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like and subscribe. When you actually like and subscribe, we actually can improve our service of this channel. So thank you guys for smashing the like button. Thanks again. This diagram here shows the product development lifecycle. You can see that there are many five phases. The initial investigate, for example, you will investigate whether this project is, is it feasible to do this thing out? Next will be on the design breadboard. Okay, so every all the design is basically very preliminary design. So if you intend to design to pass the EMC, it is always good to address them as early as possible. So for example, if you intend to design this for EMC, okay, it will be best if you can design in the design black box phase here. Okay, the reason is because, for example, you know that this is a very noisy component and you know, on the other hand, this is a component that is very sensitive to noise. So we, on the design breadboard here, you do not want to put them very close to each other. So you actually try to put them as far as possible. So this is on the EMC consideration. If you really decide to go for compliant on EMC, you need to do all the design on the early phase. So rather than over here, so once let's say you design without any EMC consideration, once you go to the compliant test, you realize that you didn't pass the EMC test. And the design can be all the way back to the design breadboard. And this is going to be very painful okay, because of the cost that will be involved. So hence, I urge you guys, if you already design with EMC, please try to do it as early as possible. This diagram here shows you the relative cost of EMC versus no EMC design consideration. The solid line belongs to product design with EMC consideration. The dashed line, okay, they are actually product design without EMC consideration. In the early phase, you probably will see that the product with EMC design consideration is much more higher as compared to those who don't intend to do any EMC consideration. Okay, this is because, for example, okay, you actually can buy components that is more expensive because they are actually compliant to the EMC. So therefore the cost initially will be higher for the product. And then finally, let's come to the production and the time on the equipment life cycle. Let's say if you design without any EMC consideration, the cost okay, can be in terms of exponential. Okay, Sometimes I see this case personally, okay, you cannot pass the EMC test, finally the project scrap. So therefore, if you intend to focus on EMC consideration, okay, I will strongly suggest you to do it ASAP. Okay, the cost is high initially, but if you take a look over here, the cost become manageable over time. Next, we are going to discuss about the interference coupling mechanism. Okay, the effect of the interference onto the receptor circuit actually depends on five main factors. One, the strength of the source. How strong is the noise, for example? Number two, the transmission medium. There are many two medium. One is over the air. Another one is on a physical wire. Okay, so there are two transmission medium. Three, proximity to the source. Okay, how close your victim is to the source. The closer it is, the more energy actually coupled over to the victim. Number four, the coupling mechanism. Okay, over here you can see that there are two coupling mechanism. Okay, which is radiate and conducted. Okay, we will go through this. 
Number five, the degree of susceptibility of the receptor. Okay, so which means that how severe the victim is actually affected by the noise. Okay, so like what I mentioned, okay, our key topics will be on the coupling mechanism. Okay, from the source to the receiver. Okay, they are be very complex and in simplified, we can classify them into radiate and conducted mechanism. Okay, so you can see from here, this EMI actually can branch into two little sub branch on radiate EMI and conducted EMI. Okay, same as EMS. Okay, you can also decouple them into radiate EMS and conducted EMS. Okay, when we talk about radiate interference, it's actually coupled between circuit equipment or system via the radiate electromagnetic field that are picked up by the victim. So take a look on this diagram here. Okay, for example, this is where is the noise source. Okay, the noise source actually radiates up the interference. So the medium is air. So you can see from here, the medium is the air. Another scenario here is also the noise source actually travel along the cable and actually from the cable, okay, the signal actually radiate out. So this is also classified under radiate here. Next, under the conductor EMI. Okay, so conductor EMI is coupled between circuit equipment or system as a result of being conducted along a cable. Okay, for example, a power cable, etc. Okay, so text. Take a look over here. Okay, for example, this is your PC. Okay, so let's say your someone actually made a coffee for you. So they actually share the same power supply. When you actually activate this coffee maker, okay, they actually generate a lot of noise. For example, the noise actually coupled onto the line. And because they share the common power source, the noise actually coupled onto the physical wire that join the power source together and actually it affect your PC. Okay, for example, you see your line on the PC. Okay, so this is what it means by EMI coupling. In short, there are two. One is radiate, okay, which the medium is air. Under conducted, the medium is cable or physical wire. Okay, for signal at frequency above 30 megahertz, okay, radiate interference is most prominent. So anything above 30 megahertz, most of the time is radiate over the air. When we have below 30 megahertz, okay, conducted EMI is more prominent, okay, which means that at lower frequency, more, less than 30 megahertz, okay, conducted EMI, which means that through the physical wire, okay, they are actually more prominent. Okay, this diagram here quickly sum out okay, what is called radiate immunity, radiate emission, conducted immunity, conducted emission. Okay, for example, this is your device that you built. Okay, and there are a numerous radiate source that come to interfere with your device. Okay, so either by radiate or by the wire from here, you can see from here. So for example, again, this is your device that you need. Okay, you also need to measure how much emission you actually release to the environment, either through the air or through the conducted. Okay, so I have this funny video or funny picture over here. Okay, you can see that this is where is the noise source. So the noise source actually want to kill this device by the emit up a very high electromagnetic wave. Okay, for example, if you have do a proper design, which means that you have a good immunity, then you will not be affected by the high radiate field. With this, I like to stop my discussion. Please help by like and subscribe. Thank you.